So now, welcome to week 14, which me and my pals are just about to spoil for you by telling you all the final scores. So much hash to be settled still in this regular season. So let's get to it. Ready, set, let's go Seahawks, Niners, Deja vu. Feels like they just played because they did just play on Thanksgiving. Thankfully, that game was borderline unwatchable because of those costumes the Seahawks wore. Egad, please turn those things into an NBA in-season tournament court. On the other side of things, this guy right here, Mr. Irrelevant, is now also your MVP frontrunner at 3-1. to one. Long story short, the CIA has not had Purdy pushing too many pencils. The Niners in this one laying 10.5 at the time of this recording. Total is 46.5. I say the Niners win it but by 10 so they don't cover that hench how say you uh this is a wild line because you know you you watch the way the seahawks move the ball against the cowboys you're like there's no way they're getting double digits and then and then you remember that the niners are a juggernaut they're going to win the super bowl and then you go no no the niners are definitely going to win this game by 17 and i think they'll be i think they'll be leading by 16 late when the seahawks score to make the final 30 to 21 Niners. I'm in your garage. Niners win. Don't cover the huge number. TMI. Don't reveal the last page of the novel, Hench. Although I do agree. The Niners are headed at least to the Super Bowl. Spaghetti, how say you? I had the Niners winning 35-23 here. Um, that Thanksgiving game, it was brutal. And the Seahawks are home, in my opinion, in the best home field advantage in football. When this uh, 49ers team is healthy with Ayuk, with Debo, with Kittle, with CMC, it's like, how do you actually stop them? Um, I know I had the Eagles winning the Super Bowl this year, but like what Hench just said, the 49ers may actually win it. They are the best team in the NFL right now. They win that game. Brock Purdy is playing outstanding. Uh, I feel like every week I give that CMC touchdown prop. How about I do this one? Brock Purdy over one and a half touchdown passes he's done it six times this season he's fourth in the nfl in touchdown passes and then you parlay that with cmc to score that's plus 113 uh same game parlay on caesars so do that win some money our ruggedly handsome aggregate brady lemieux says he likes the niners to win but only up to 10 so beware quick look in the rear view to see how we got here I'm 10 over on the season. Hench is one back of me hanging like the sword of Damocles over my head. Spaghetti's righted his ship and is now six over for the season. And look at Brady Lemieux soaring. 22 over. What's done is done. Bills at Chiefs in the same spot where the greatest playoff game, or at least the greatest two minutes of a playoff game, was played not two years ago. You remember? Through 58 minutes, Bills receiver Gabe Davis had already scored two touchdowns. Then he caught a third touchdown to give Buffalo the lead with just under two minutes left. But then Tyree Kill said peace out to the Bills secondary and gave the Chiefs the lead. But then with 13 seconds left, number 13, Gabe Davis scored again. But then Harrison Butker tied it and then Travis Kelsey won it in OT and then Kelsey became a Swifty and Taylor became person of the year and who knows maybe she'll also get a ring before Josh Allen gets one if he ever gets one at all but he does still have a great shot at leading the league in INTs Casey now laying a point and a half total on this one is 48 and a half I say the Chiefs honor that great playoff game by the same tally 42 to 36 Hench how say you Oh, my God. You know, obviously, uh, whatever I say about the Chiefs will be wrong. I cannot uh, I just can never be on the right side of this. So fade me for sure. I think the Bills win this game by a field goal. I thought the Chiefs looked crazily unathletic on mm. both sides of the ball against the Packers when all I needed was for them to win, not even cover. Uh, and And they didn't. And they just, you know. The receivers run the run the wrong routes. They they drop the ball. Like obviously they're taking away Kelsey now. So I think the Bills, who seem to have figured it out on offense, they they write the ship thirty to twenty seven. You know, you said fade, and I do wonder a tough flat out, not fading away, just flat out disappearing. What happened to Mahomes' brother? Is that like part of the deal with Taylor? Like I'll come into the into the luxury box as long as that guy's not there because he has been absolutely invisible this season either way spaghetti house are you saying there's a uh, there's a blank space where he used to be 
Oh, uh, I, I think I, that's a Taylor yeah, Swift lyric, it, right? It, Spaghetti gets it. Uh, it is. That was a good joke. That was a good joke. Shaq, you okay, gotta listen good. to the radio a couple of times. Um, I have no reason to be picking the Chiefs in this game, but I am. I'm taking the KC at 38 35 over the Bills. Uh, you would think <laughs> Bills coming off the bye, they'd be better. You, uh, Hench mentioned it. Uh, Charles Kelsey isn't really the same anymore. He's getting up there in age. Maybe his interests are outside of football now. But I do think with Casey's ability to run the ball now with Pacheco, you know, being one of the leading rushers in the NFL. And I do think the emergence of Rasheed Rice has kind of helped Mahomes a little bit. So that that loss last week, they'll get right after. I do like Rasheed Rice over five and a half um, receptions. He has 16 catches on 19 targets the last two weeks. Um, they should have gotten receiver the depth line or the off season, but he may be emerging as the guy. I think game script also will help him kind of go over that at plus plus one twenty there. So Casey wins a close one. <laughs> I love the confidence. And says fade me spaghetti says, I don't know why I'm making this prick Brady Lemieux more confident in saying the chiefs win by exactly two moving on. Eagles of course, Brady Lemieux is more confident. He's 22 games over 500. <laughs> Touché. Touché. Hockey Touché. Son of a b- <laughs> <laughs> the eagles here in dallas to play america's alleged team you know it was only a week ago talk about how fast this move m- this league moves after they beat the defending champs philly was allegedly america's best team now they're at risk of playing on the road in the wild card round and people are talking about replacing jalen hurts with marcus mariota marcus mariota <laughs> yeesh and speaking of hurts mike mccarthy's appendix did hurt So it got removed, which creates a murky situation on that Dallas sideline. Still, I'm taking the Cowboys laying three and a half at the time of this recording. Total is 51. I say it's the Cowboys by two. And guess what? That's got to be good enough for you, Dallas fans. Just get a win. Who cares about the point spread? Bet the money line. Hench, how say you? Well, I mean, much like Mike McCarthy's appendix, I I feel like this Eagles bubble has burst. They, Hmm. they, uh, they have been treading water, like winning games late, winning games ugly, winning games they didn't play well in. Obviously, going back to the game in Philly, the Cowboys should have had four cracks from the six-yard line to win that game, but Dak figured out a way to uh, to lose it. That doesn't happen this week. Uh, I like the Cowboys to win and cover 31-24. Spaghetti. Wow, uh, both on the Cowboys. Uh, I'm taking the Eagles here, 33-31. Their only loss up until the blowout last week was versus the Jets. I feel like they kind of need that loss. Weird statement, but sometimes it's you need a get-right game here. There's a reason why they win those, cl- those close, tough games here. I'm not going to pick Dallas to win a big game until they actually do. And no, I'm not counting uh, you know, Thanksgiving. I'm not counting that flag fest on TNF versus Seahawks. Those are not big games. Like This is a big game. They need to win this one, but I still like the Eagles winning this game. Um, I like Jalen Hurts under 34-and-a-half passing attempts here. It's minus 115. He's done it six times. You've looked at game uh, versus Dallas um, last time, the last matchup, only 27 attempts versus them and Dallas is the fourth best defense in terms of passing yards allowed I don't think they're going to be looking to throw the ball quite a bit it'd be more of a run heavy attack um, for the Eagles so I like that under for Jalen Hurts I like the pregame conversation on the field between Cooper Rush and Marcus Mariota like wait they they thought that you're better than Dak oh you want a good one they think you're better than Jalen Hurts oh the laughter Brady Lemieux says take the Cowboys just like me and that's got to be enough the money line is the play Cowboys fans here's a sentence that'll send a chill up the spine of New York sports fans Jordan is headed your way but don't worry it's not that one then great news though because the love I'm talking to the Jordan I'm talking about is playing pretty well himself I mean of course The Packers are headed to play the Giants, yes, like Ron Dane in December of 1999. Some Wisconsin-based football players are headed to New York City. No Heisman Trophy for any of them, but Love & Company can get a step closer to the playoffs. No, not the playoffs. Jordan Travis got left out of, I mean, the NFL playoffs. You know, where Favre lost to the Giants in Lambeau and where Rodgers lost to the Giants in Lambeau. Now, it's Love in whatever they call that place in new in uh, northern New Jersey, the Giants plus six and a half. I say Green Bay wins doesn't cover 24 to 20. Hench, I'll say you. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Aaron Rodgers, because if you know, one of the, the fun ways to watch this football season has just been like, what would make Aaron Rodgers sad? You know, mm. obviously, that's that's always my goal. And uh, Jordan Love being excellent. You know, the, the idea was get Aaron Rodgers to win now. And then we'll see if Jordan Love develops. Well, obviously, even for one game, you'd rather Jordan Love over a healthy Aaron Rodgers. 
Uh, Jordan Love's playing great. I don't think this game's close. Packers 27-12. Uh, uh, I'm sure Spaghetti, I can already see him nodding. He, he He's going to follow course with his Giants uh, coming back to earth against the Pack. I am surprised that you're so bullish on these Packers. It, you know, the, you are they now a juggernaut? Out of the Chiefs? I, the champions? I, I, I did. I around. did. They pushed them around. Yeah, but here comes Tommy DeVito. What's he got to say about all this spaghetti? What he's got to say is that it's the it's a loss for the Giants. And uh, hmm. it, Giants at home in a primetime game. I've seen this story time and time again. Every time you get hype for a Giants game at home in primetime, they embarrass themselves on national television. And then everyone says, why are the Giants allowed on TV for everyone to watch? I get a million angry tweets saying your team sucks. Thank you. I know. Uh, I'm not going to buy into the Tommy DeVito hype. And I do think Jordan Love has played better. It's been a bit of a roller coaster of a season. Started off really great. Kind of the middle of the season. Not so great. Now he's picked it back up. Um which is kind of why my player prop here is a strange one. I, I think the Saquon stuff is too high. I'm not buying into any DeVito stuff. And I think Jordan Love is kind of erratic, although, again, has been better as of late. What I do like is their kicker, Anders Carlson, over six and a half, kicking points, minus 133. Not a great number, but I'm trying to win you money here. Um, he's done it five times. He has eight games this season with two field goal attempts and uh, 11 out of 12 games with an extra point. I don't see any reason why um, he's not getting involved in this, in this game. I think the Packers will be living in the Giants' territory. Um it's going to be an ugly game, a gross game for the Giants, and I wish I could erase this from my memory. So uh, there you go. Win some money. Hey, kicker uh, props, also part of the Monday Night Football doubleheader. I don't know where that came from. Go ahead, Hench. Time check, Spaghetti. Time check. Oh, we're good. We got about four minutes. Okay, oh, great. great. Uh, Lemieux, by the way, says double-digit win for Love and Company. Rams headed to Charm City, where Lamar and Company are fresh off their bye after beating L.A.'s other team in L.A. a fortnight ago. Number eight's getting MVP buzz at six to one, but number nine's been no slouch himself lately. Stafford and his pals, most notably Puka Nakua, have won three straight and are going to be favored in the three games after this one. What Brady Lemieux and I are trying to tell you is bet the Rams to make the playoffs plus 145 in this one. Ravens minus seven, total is 40. I say the Ravens get it but by a single digit. Hench, how say you? Uh, this is my big one this week. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, your handicap in this game, you go, well, the Ravens are going to win. Are they going to cover the big number? And I'm like, I think it's going to be close. And then I said, you know what? If you think it's going to be close, have some guts. There you I go. am picking the Rams to win this game outright. 27-24. The Rams have a better running back than they did when they won the Super Bowl. Kyron Williams is legit. I think he's a game changer. The defense is playing well. The Rams move the ball against that Browns defense, which is excellent. Uh, yeah, don't sleep on the Rams. I like them to keep it close and what the hell, win it late on a field goal. I love it. Spaghetti, how say you? That's living, not just surviving. I, I, I wish I had the conference to take the Rams. I do think this is going to be by far the best game of the weekend. This is a weekend full of some great games. Hmm. Casey Buffalo, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, obviously the NFC East matchups here, but I really think this is going to be a great one. And Hench was touching on it. Look what the Rams did versus the best defense in football, the best pass defense in football. Look what Matt Stafford did. The uh, offense now is just so balanced with Matt Stafford playing well, having Puka, having Cooper Cup. I know Higby got banged up with a uh, concussion thing, but he should be back. You have Kyron Williams now, who is an every down back could do it anything you ask for. So McVay's in a good spot with his offense. I just think this Baltimore defense is really good. I do think Lamar Jackson will make plays when he needs to. They win 25-22. But like I said, Matt Stafford playing really well. Bizarre player prop uh, totals for him. The over, they give him a, they set the line as passing touchdowns at a half. So I have Matt Stafford over a half a pass touchdown. And I have Matt Stafford over 200 and a half passing yards. That's plus 122. Again, just look what he did last week versus the Browns, the best de uh, defensive football, the best pass defense in football. He will clear those numbers, but the Rams unfortunately lose. You heard the toot and horn three times there. The most unlikely three car garage, I think, of the season here. We're all on the Rams in Charm City. Brady Lemieux says it's tight too. He has Baltimore winning. Narrowly next, Vikes Raiders our Anton Shagor coin flip of the game, unless the last game we just talked about serves as that too. It's a Super Bowl 11 rematch as well. All right, Josh Dobbs v. Aiden Quinn ain't exactly Tarkenton v. Stabler, but it's an important one for both teams. Vikes want it so they can stick around for January. Antonio Pierce wants it so he can stick around for next September. Vegas is plus three at home, total is 41. I say Dobbs and company go in there and leave with a victory 24-19. Hench, how say you? 
Well, this is bizarre that doot, doot, doot. we're not in the same, just in the same garage. We have the same weird score. I don't know mm. how we both came up with 19, but I say Vikings 24, 19. Um, Josh Dobbs worse than Tarkenton was in that Super Bowl against the bears. I mean, he was horrendous. Um, but hopefully he puts the glass slipper back on this week. Uh, and we reverts to the Josh Dobbs who hadn't read the playbook. I mean, he was better running, running out of a cab to the stadium than, than he was after a month with the playbook. But I, I like this Vikings team. Uh, I like him to make the playoffs and it starts this week. All right. I've embarrassed you a couple of times with some 1.8 second instant trivia quizzes for you, Kevin okay. Hedge. Off the top of my head now, I'm going to throw one at you, an easy one, so you get an A-plus here. Name one person who scored a touchdown in Super Bowl XI. One. Clarence Davis. Oh, he barely got that in. Of course, you and I, as men of justice, demand that Clarence Davis be given the MVP for that Super Bowl. Why Fred Bolitnikoff still retains it. A mystery. Four a catches. Payment. Four catches for 79 yards. Clarence no Davis touchdown. had a better day. What are we doing? Willie four Brown should have gotten it. catches for 79 yards, zero touchdowns. This this is use. Uh, this is a good use of our time in a fifteen minute pregame show, belly aching about <laughs> something that happened in uh, nineteen seventy seven. Spaghetti, go ahead. I'll wrap it up quickly. Um, this is a game that maybe if the Vikings were home and maybe a week, you know, before the uh, Dobbs started to throw a bunch of interceptions, I might have won the Vikings here. Instead, I'm going Raiders at home, 23-20 over Minnesota. I mentioned Dobbs interceptions. I like that prop. It's minus 106 for him to throw one. Uh, he's fourth in the NFL interceptions, and he threw five in his last two games. I think his turnovers will make the difference in this game, and the, uh, the Raiders win a close one. All right, Brady Lemieux likes the Vikes up to two and a half here. Where are we on time, Spaghetti? Is that we a are over? That's it. Boo! I wanted to do the AFC West shootout, the Denver and Chargers, and I wanted Colts and Bengals. So instead, you're going to have to go and watch this on YouTube, on the Extra Points channel, or at 4 p.m. when it is revealed on Twitter Friday. Check it out. We appreciate you doing so. Spread the good word about it and spread the good word about the Minus 3 program. Two great episodes there for you. Until next week, thanks so much, football fans. It's been a thin slice of heaven. Ah!